Dry fasting is one of the most extreme forms of fasting because it involves avoiding both food and water for a set period of time. And in recent years, some people have been curious about whether it could have benefits for conditions like arthritis, gut inflammation, or joint pain. In this video, we are going to explore the science, the theories, the personal reports, and, importantly, the risks and limitations you must understand before even thinking about trying it. This is purely an educational discussion based on available research and anecdotal observations. I am not a doctor and nothing here is medical advice. You should always speak to a qualified healthcare professional before attempting any form of fasting, especially dry fasting because it can be dangerous if done incorrectly or if you have certain health conditions. If you enjoy learning about health fasting and the science behind different dietary approaches, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to join an ongoing conversation with like-minded people, check the link to my Telegram channel in the description. So, let us begin by understanding why anyone would even link dry fasting to improvements in joint or gut-related issues. At the core of this discussion is the idea of inflammation. Arthritis, whether it's osteoarthritis or autoimmune-related forms like rheumatoid arthritis, is driven in large part by inflammatory processes in the body. Similarly, gut inflammation, whether caused by conditions like gastritis, colitis, or general digestive irritation, involves immune system activity that leads to swelling, pain, or dysfunction. Oh, yes. Chronic inflammation can damage tissues over time, and one of the ways scientists and practitioners have been exploring to manage it is through diet and fasting. Fasting in general has been shown in some studies to reduce certain inflammatory markers in the body. When we stop eating for a period of time, the body may shift its energy away from digestion and towards repair and maintenance processes. Water fasting, intermittent fasting, and calorie restriction have all been linked to some reduction in inflammation. In both animal studies and certain human trials, now, dry fasting is sometimes said to be a more intense form of fasting that could theoretically accelerate these effects. Supporters of dry fasting believe that by removing both food and water, the body experiences a stronger metabolic stress that triggers processes like autophagy the breakdown and recycling of damaged cellular components, and possibly an anti-inflammatory response. The idea is that, in the absence of external hydration, the body may seek out internal sources of water by breaking down damaged cells and fat, which can release stored water and nutrients. In theory, this could also lead to the removal of malfunctioning immune cells or damaged tissue that may be contributing to inflammation in the joints or gut. However, it's critical to be clear that while this theory is intriguing, scientific evidence in humans is still very limited. There are some animal studies showing that fasting and dehydration stress can influence immune function. And there are observational reports from people who practice dry fasting claiming reduced pain or swelling. But these are not the same as large, controlled clinical trials. In the case of arthritis, some practitioners point to improved mobility and reduced morning stiffness after short dry fasts. But again, these are individual experiences and may be influenced by multiple factors including rest, reduced caloric load, and even placebo effects. When it comes to gut inflammation, fasting in general can sometimes give the digestive system a break from constant processing of food, which may help reduce irritation. In cases where certain foods are contributing to inflammation, removing all intake temporarily could lead to symptom relief. Dry fasting simply adds the water restriction layer, which some say deepens the rest period for the gut. Though there is no definitive research proving it is better than water fasting for this purpose. It's also important to remember that in some cases, especially with gut-related illnesses, dehydration can actually worsen symptoms, so it is not safe to assume that dry fasting is appropriate for everyone. For joint pain that is not strictly arthritis-related, such as pain from overuse or minor injuries, Fasting in general may help reduce inflammation during the healing process, but it is still not a cure and should be approached with caution. Now, let's talk about the risks, because they are significant. Dry fasting limits your ability to rehydrate, and dehydration can occur quickly, especially in warm climates or if you are physically active. This can lead to dizziness, headaches, low blood pressure, electrolyte imbalances, kidney stress, and in extreme cases, organ damage. People with kidney disease, heart conditions, gout, or metabolic disorders are at particular risk. 
and dry fasting should be completely avoided during pregnancy, breastfeeding, childhood, or adolescence. Even for healthy adults, dry fasting can be dangerous if extended beyond a safe limit, and many who practice it keep it to less than 24 hours when starting out, sometimes even shorter. Another thing to note is that fasting can affect medication absorption and blood sugar levels. So anyone on medication, especially for chronic conditions, must consult a doctor first. If someone is cleared by a healthcare professional and still chooses to experiment with dry fasting, best practice from experienced practitioners includes keeping the duration short, avoiding physical exertion, staying in a cool environment, and breaking the fast carefully. That usually means drinking small amounts of water first. Then slowly reintroducing light is lee digestible foods to avoid shocking the digestive system. This careful rehydration process is important because the body fluid and electrolyte balance can be delicate after a period without water. It's also worth emphasizing that while inflammation is a factor in arthritis, gut issues, and joint pain, it is not the only factor. And fasting alone will not address underlying causes such as structural joint damage, autoimmune dysfunction, or bacterial imbalances in the gut. Medical treatment, physical therapy, appropriate nutrition, and other interventions may all be necessary parts of a complete plan. The main takeaway here is that dry fasting may have potential anti-inflammatory effects in theory, and some people report feeling relief from joint or gut discomfort after practicing it, but this should be seen as an area of emerging curiosity rather than established science. It's fascinating to see how traditional practices from different cultures align with modern interest in fasting and cellular health. But until more research is done, we should approach these claims with both interest and skepticism. If you are interested in reducing inflammation naturally, there are many well-studied strategies such as eating an anti-inflammatory diet rich in vegetables. Fruits own GATA2-3 fatty acids and avoiding excessive processed foods and sugars along with regular movement quality sleep and stress management. These approaches carry far less risk than extreme fasting and can be used alongside medical care. Still, for those who are already healthy, have medical clearance and are curious about exploring fasting's effects. Dry fasting remains an intense option that must be approached with caution and respect for its risks. The human body is remarkably adaptive, and fasting is one of the ways we can tap into that adaptability. But it is not something to experiment with carelessly. By keeping expectations realistic, ensuring medical guidance, and focusing on overall lifestyle rather than a single intervention. You can make informed decisions that truly support your long-term health. If you found this discussion helpful and want to learn more about the intersection of fasting, inflammation, and wellness, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also join my Telegram community through the link in the description where we have deeper ongoing conversations about these topics. And if you'd like to support the channel and help me create more educational content, you can contribute using the thanks button below. Your support really makes a difference. Take care of your health, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.